That last Alaris by Francis Hodgson Burnett. Chapter 40 The interview between Annie's and Derek was a long one. At the end, Derek said, I shall go to Ashley Wall. Grace had been called out almost immediately after his return to the house, but on his way home he met Alice, and having something to say about the school, he turned towards the rectory with her. They had not gone far, however, before they were joined by a third party, Mr. Sammy Craddock, who was wending his way crownward. Seeing them, Mr. Craddock hesitated for a moment, as if feeling somewhat doubtful, but as they approached him he pulled off his hat. I dunna know, he said, after all, if it would not be as well to our witness. Hope you're nicely, miss, affably, and the same to you, parson. Would you, clearing his throat, would you mind shaking hands with a chap? Grace gave him his hand. Thank you, parson, said our Sammy. It's the first time, you know, but it shanna be the last if you dunna see out again it. The truth is, as it's summer has been on my mind for some time, ever since that accident, in fact, pluck's pluck, you see, whether you're for a mon or again him, you're not much to look at, you might be handsomer, and you might be likelier, you might easily have more muscle, and you don't look as if you were like to be much in argument, but you're getting a backbone of your own, I'm danged if you are not. Hey, much obliged to you, I am sure, said Grace. You need not be, answered Sammy, encouragingly. You need not be. If you getting out to be obliged to me for, I shouldn't have so much to say. You see, I'm making a sort of apology. A sort of apology. With evident enjoyment of the word. And that's why I said as it might be as well to have a witness. I were always one to set more store by state than the church and Parsons were near in my line, and happen I had been a bit hard on you, and I said things as carried weight again you, with them as valid my opinion on things in general. And sin the blow, I am made up my mind, as I wouldn't have mind telling you, as I were a-going to withdraw my opposition, sin it seemed as if I'd made a bit of mistake. You're neither knave nor fool, if you are a parson. There now, good morning to you. No one on em can say as I weren't a fair, how Sammy said to himself, as he went on his way, shaking his head. I couldn't have done the fairer. He deserved a better commendation, and I let him have it. Be fair we a mon, say I, parson or no, and he is not the wrong sort, after all. He was so well pleased with himself, that he even carried his virtue into the crown, and diffused it abroad over his pint of sixpenny. He found it not actually unpleasant to display himself as a magnet, who, having made a most natural mistake, had been too independent and straightforward to let the matter rest, and consequently had gone to the magnificent length of apologetic explanation. I have been having a word of so wet little parson, he said. I have been telling him what a thout, what he did day up blow up. I changed my mind about little chap that day, and I have been telling him so. You are, in an amazed chorus. Well now, that there were a turn, Sammy. I it were, I'm not afraid to speak my mind one way or t'other. You see, when a man shows us his meadow reek cloth, I am not afraid to tell him I like the web, 